أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين باري الخلائق أجمعين باعث الأنبياء والمرسلين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ونبينا وحبيب قلوبنا وشفيع ذنوبنا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين وأصحابه المنتجبين أما بعد السلام عليكم جميعا ورحمة الله وبركاته My dear brothers and sisters I meet you here to speak about one of the very important personalities in the history of Islam and that is Muhammad son of Ali al-Ridha famously known as al-Jawad regarded as the ninth Imam among his Imams from the Ahlul Bayt of the Prophet ﷺ. It is impossible to cover the whole life of such an important personality because of the great role that he played and because of his own very dynamic personality. It's beyond my capability to try and cover most of the aspects related to this holy personality. However, I would like to go through a few items that relate to this holy life so that we may be able to understand something from the life of this holy personality. Beginning with his own life, he is from the heart of the Prophet's family, which is regarded by Muslims to be the holiest and the most honorable family that humanity has ever known through the, his, the, the history. Muhammad al-Jawad is son of the eighth Imam among the infallible Imams. Ali bin Musa al-Ridha. And of course his lineage ends up with the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Al-Imam Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali bin Abi Talib alayhi salam. Therefore he is a branch from this noble tree. And therefore there is no doubt that he comes from a respected background that all Muslims regard with a lot of honor. Regarding his mother, it is known in the history that his mother was one of the purest and most abstinent and virtuous of Muslim women. Though she was a slave uh, at a certain point because of the circumstances in the history. But that did not degrade her position nor harm her dignity because Islam did not really give value to what people had used to and to the practices of that time of regarding some people to be lower than the others because of the status created by themselves. And this why you would see that the Prophet and the Imams practiced certain things to confirm that Islam does not give any preference to lineage, to special class of people, other than Iman and faith, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put it for us, 
that the only distinguishing factor is faith. It is what differentiates about the people. The historians mentioned that the name of the mother of Muhammad al-Jawad, as uh, it is in many uh, narrations, is al-Khayzuran. And uh, Imam Ridha alayhi salam uh, is known to have uh, named her by uh, that name and he used to call her by this name. And it is said that her lineage ends up to the lineage of Maria al qabtiya the wife of the Holy Prophet Muhammad al-Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. Now it's reported that Imam Rila gave a lot of importance and uh, uh, honor to his wife, uh, Khayzaran, the mother of uh, the ninth Imam, because he had information, he had knowledge that she would be the mother of the uh, ninth infallible or the ninth Imam. And therefore, he did not put her the same level as other women. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wished that she would be the mother of this holy personality. And therefore, Imam Ridha alayhi salam entrusted his honored sister Hakima, the daughter of Imam Musa al kadhim alayhi salam, to be the one that would give company to his wife, Khizran, uh, especially at the time when she was expecting. I must mention here before I proceed further that Imam Ridha, uh, at uh, a very advanced age, had not been uh, able to get a son. And people were very anxious, especially his followers, knowing him as the Imam, were very anxious of who is going to be the next person after him. And uh, Imam used to assure them that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will definitely give him a child, a son, who would be the divine vegetarian on the earth. And after the age of 40 is when now Imam is expecting such a son. And uh, when the time neared, he made the preparations. He asked the uh, sister, Hakima, to be with his wife and to bring a uh, midwife with her so that they could take care of, uh, the, uh, of, of the delivery process of, the, uh, of this masoom. And it was not long until when the... Uh, awaited Imam was finally born. And Imam was so delighted, was so happy. And uh, he announced the birth of uh, this Holy Son and uh, informed some of his own followers about the birth of the awaited Imam to remove the anxiety and the doubts that were there among us, the people. Many uh, traditions have been reported in this regard, uh, but because of this uh, short uh, time, I would not be able to read for you the narrations that have been reported, have been recorded on this uh, issue. He performed after the birth of uh, the man, as usual, he performed the rituals that are normally performed uh, when a child is born. And he, therefore, he recited the Adhan in his right ear and Iqama in, this, in his left, and then placed him back in his cradle. And he named him Muhammad, and with the surname as Abu Jafar. And this is why Imam uh, Muhammad al Jawad is known also among his acronyms as Abu Jafar, but to distinguish between him and his own grandfather, Al-Imam Muhammad al-Baqir, they normally call him, or we normally call him 
Abu Jafar Athani the second because the first one is Al Imam Muhammad Al Baqir who is the fifth Imam. Imam Muhammad uh, throughout the history and uh, this is across all the historians not specific school of thought he is known of several titles and among these titles is uh, that he is a jawad jawad meaning the a, a person who is very kind very generous and uh, the one who uh, gives without uh, uh, much hesitation or any consideration. He gives whoever comes to him. So he was known as a jawad And uh, we will come to some instances which are narrated in supporting this uh, title that was given to him uh, at uh, an early stage of his life. He is also known as a taqay meaning the pious, the one with full fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is always conscious of his Lord and he would not be swayed off the track by anything. He always remained uh, cautious and uh, uh, conscious of the uh, presence of the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And uh, we'll see later that Ma'amun al-Abbasi, the uh, Abbasid Caliph tried at many instances to uh, try and lure him into his own activities uh, worldly activities, but he could not succeed. Imam Muhammad al-Jawad was born on the, uh, according to some uh, narrations, in the month of Ramadan, in the year 195. But of course, uh, there would be some other su suggestions regarding his birthday. But this is not our subject today. Uh, actually, we just want to highlight about the life of this holy personality. Now, there isn't much that we can talk about his upbringing because just like his own uh, forefathers, the upbringing was done directly by the Imam of, uh, of the time, by his own father, Al Imam Ali Ridha alayhi salam, and he is the one who supervised his own upbringing and uh, made sure that he has received all the knowledge and instructions that uh, he's supposed to receive for the guidance of the people. And therefore you'd find that from the young age, very young age, uh, Imam was well endowed with knowledge and with intelligence. And this is not something that uh, is uh, uh, unique with him, it's all with all the Imams of Ahl Bayt When you look into their lives, you realize that uh, that they never went to any school. They were never taught by any sheikh. They uh, were not under instruction of any person, uh, and th they they just received knowledge directly from their own uh, parents, from their uh, from the Imams uh, that uh, were there before them, or from their fathers that preceded them. And therefore, their knowledge was direct, uh, f f uh, linked to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi You would not find that an Imam went to a school or was taught by a uh, Sheikh son. So, and this is a strange thing that you will make you understand the difference between the Imams, the divine Imams, and why they're called divine Imams, and other personalities who are also referred to as Imams, but they gain their knowledge and their own positions by study, by hard work, by trying to uh, emulate and to uh, find out certain things. But you would find that the Imams from the Ahl Bayt of the Prophet Sallallahu have the knowledge, the profound knowledge, deep understanding of Islam and the Holy Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu without going through the normal process that we know of. And this is something that comes out clearly when you look into the life of the ninth Imam, who actually received Imamat at a very early age, uh, to a point that some people were a bit confused whether you know he is, should be the one that is the Imam or not. How is it that he will be regarded as the Imam, though at that very very tender age of seven years? But the uh, the, the actual thing is that. Uh, if you understand the tradition of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with his own 
servants and with his own prophets and the awliya, you would not be so much shocked uh, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is capable of making a very uh, young person, young child, to have a full uh, understanding, full knowledge of things that uh, need people. Uh, people may not even uh, reach to whatever, uh, no matter what they try to do in their lives to reach such, such knowledge. It's a, it's a, it's a special gift uh, that they are given so that they be the source of guidance to the people. So uh, you'll find that uh, these things come out clearly in the life of the Imam alayhi salam from very young age and imam ridha alayhi salam as uh, his responsibility he um, introduced the imam jishawad to the people so that they could know him and so that they should follow him after him uh, because uh, if he did not do so then the people would be misguided just like uh, from the beginning the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, had to make it clear of who is the leader after him and who should be their reference after him. Uh, the same thing happened with every imam. He, every imam would make an effort to remove doubts, to make sure that the person that comes, that succeeds him, is known to the people, at least to a number of people who are authentic and who are genuine and who would maintain that uh, proof uh, so that people are guided and are shown who, are the, who is the right person. Uh, for reference. Remember that we are talking about a person who is living in a time that is covered with a lot of uh, tyranny, a lot of uh, uh, the, the supervision of the uh, the powers of the time, the authorities of that time. And there is no free movement, no free speech, and the Imams are not just left uh, to practice uh, you know, their knowledge and their, uh, uh, their, 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 their faith in the right way as they, they wish to. They are get, they're kept under as you know, very strict guard and very uh, close supervision of the of the rulers. However, the imams made an effort to make sure that the person that succeeded him, the the line of imamment, is not cut off, and people, uh, the followers of Ahlul Bayt salam, would be knowing the next person that comes. So Imam Rida alayhi salam introduced people to uh, Imam Al Jawad, Muhammad Al Jawad to many of his companions, so they would relate to him as their own uh, imam. And uh, several narrations are also mentioned in this regard. Um, once it is said that Al-Fadl bin Sahel uh, sent Muhammad bin Abi, uh, Abu Abad, the clerk of him, Rida alayhi salam, asking him about the kind of relation, relation of Imam Rida alayhi salam uh, with his son, Imam Muhammad al-Jawad. And the clerk replied that Rida, does not mention his son Muhammad except by his acronym, that is Abu Jafar. Uh, interestingly, uh, you know, there was uh, um, very little time that Imam Rida salam spent with his own child, his son Imam Muhammad Jawad. And some of the correspondences that uh, you know happened uh, between the Imam, the eighth Imam, Imam Ali Rida, and Muhammad Jawad uh, are recording history that. You know, Imam at his very young age would write to his father, Imam Jawad would write to his father, Imam Rida, to inform him about certain things in, in a very eloquent and uh, very uh, clear language. And all, all Imam Rida would receive his letters and say that uh, Abu Jafar wrote to him uh, and he would honor him and show uh, this, uh, the high status that he enjoyed in his heart. And uh, this is something that uh, would tell us about the relationship that they they had between them. And uh, it is the same case that when we look at uh, how the historians have described the personality of uh, Imam al-Jawad uh, you would see um, several personalities uh, describing the kind of status that he enjoyed. And before I come to that, there's an incident uh, that happened with his uncle uh, by the name Ali bin Jafar, that is Ali, son of Jafar. Uh, he would be a brother to Imam Musa al Kadhim. And uh, therefore, uh, from this line, he would be his own uncle. Uh, Imam Muhammad Jawad was at his tender age. And Ali bin Jafar was one of the great jurisprudence, fuqaha 
uh, at his own time, though he's not an Imam al Masu, but he was a respected person. And uh, he used to teach and uh, narrate the hadith of uh, Ahlul Bayt. So at one time when he was sitting with a group of people uh, narrating to them the hadith, uh, the riwayahs that he had received from uh, Imam uh, Imam Sam and from Imam Musa al Kadim, uh, Imam Muhammad al Jawad came by and uh, appeared to the uh, gathering. Ali, the uncle of the Imam, immediately stood up uh, to receive him and uh, uh, went forward and kissed his hand and honored him so much. People were shocked at how he showed his respect to a very young boy. According uh, to them or according to the customs, he should be the one who would be uh, lowering himself or uh, showing that respect uh, to his uncle. Uh, however, when they asked him, how did you, uh, you know, bow down respectively to him and you showed him that much honor? He said to them that I know uh, of him what you do not really know. He is uh, the one that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made uh, to be in that position, in high position, which uh, is given to him despite his own uh, young age. And he did not qualify me because of this beard, uh, and he held his hand to the, with his beard, uh, to be the imam. So uh, he recognized him at that very uh, young age as of the imam. He had the knowledge that this is the imam, though he had uh, not grown old, and he was just in the beginning of his own uh, life. The uh, scholars also from uh, among the respected uh, historians uh, on, on, on other sides have described the personality and the uh, kind of uh, status that Imam Muhammad Jawad enjoyed. At Dhahabi, uh, in one of, uh, in Tariq al-Islam, in, uh, uh, in this book, uh, says Muhammad al-Jawad was surnamed al-Jawad, the generous, al-Qani, the satisfied, al-Murtala, uh, the one who is satisfied, uh, been satisfied with, and he was one of the chiefs of the Prophet's family. And he was described as being generous, therefore he was named as Jawad. This is al dahabi talking about Imam Muhammad al-Jawad. Ibn Taymiyyah, Muhammad, uh, Ahmad bin Taymiyyah, also describes Imam Muhammad Jawad in his uh, uh, books, uh, in one of his books, Minhaj Sunnah, uh, volume two. He says, Muhammad bin al Jawad was one of the notables of the Hashmites. He was famous of his generosity and therefore he was called al Jawad. And, and, and this is uh, something that comes out very uh, clearly. Uh, uh, As Safadi also, uh, you know, uh, in the Al Wafi Bil Wafiyant, uh, he says about Imam Muhammad Al Jawad, Muhammad Al Jawad was surnamed Al Jawad Al Qani Al Murtada. Uh, he was one of the chiefs of the Prophet's family. He was described as being generous, therefore, he was surnamed as Al Jawad. Ibn Jawzi, uh, Asibt Ibn Jawzi, uh, one of also the famous scholars, says, Muhammad al Jawad followed the steps, the footsteps of his father in knowledge, piety, and generosity. As the Kiratul Khawas uh, in, in his book he mentions about that. So uh, when we talk of uh, um, uh, Imam Muhammad al Jawad and uh, we um, talk of him as the Imam and uh, uh, bring out some of his own uh, aspects and uh, show him to be of our status. It's not an exaggeration, not something that has been fabricated or just wrote about him and made to belong to him. He is, uh, it is proven, it's, uh, 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 you know, something that uh, is evidenced by uh, in history and scholars have talked about him in such a way and he is famous, uh, famously known of that. Therefore, it is a fact that uh, he had a distinguished and uh, a very uh, exalted position amongst other people, uh, especially at his own time, after the uh, earth imam or after his father, no one else would be known of such kind of respect than Imam Muhammad al-Jawad. And uh, uh, many uh, narrations point out 
uh, to this. So in any case, Muhammad uh, al-Jawad, therefore, was absolutely the imam, uh, a divine imam, uh, the one that had the authority uh, among his, the Ummah and, and uh, the one that people are supposed to respect and refer to and obey. And uh, he enjoyed that position that was given to them by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as Imam introduced him, he was as such. Now, maybe uh, so that we can uh, benefit somehow on and um, learn from his own life, uh, it's important to point out some of uh, his own attributes and how he uh, he became famously known of them. Uh, Imam Abu Jafar Muhammad al Jawad salam was one of the most generous and open handed people, and uh, for this reason he was called al Jawad. And uh, there are several instances that confirm this uh, uh, fact, and. Uh, uh, we, we just want to give an example of this. Uh, we, we cannot cover all the instances, but there, there are so many instances. The historians have mentioned that one year, uh, a person called Ahmed bin Hadid and some of his companions set out to perform Hajj. On their way back, uh, they were robbed and uh, all their goods and monies and luggages went. Uh, this is actually time for Hajj. People are going for Hajj. In those days, it was quite difficult uh, to travel for Hajj, and people would spend months on the way, uh, you know, to uh, to reach uh, Mecca. Uh, now it is a matter of hours. Uh, people would be in Mecca. Um, in those days, it was very difficult. So this person went for Hajj with a group, and they uh, were robbed on uh, by by the robbers uh, on their way back to Medina. When they arrived in Medina, Ahmad uh, bin Hadid went to Imam Jawad and told him about the story and what happened to them, uh, to him and his companions. Imam uh, gave them uh, enough money uh, uh, similar to what they had lost, a cloth and clothes and all the necessary items that they had already lost. So much that uh, nothing, it is like they lost nothing. And Imam alayhi salam, uh, saved them from distress and uh, recompensed them uh, from whatever had been taken to them. And this is one instance that is uh, recorded. Another very interesting instance that uh, you know occurred and uh, points out to the uh, this attribute of generosity from Imam was that one of the Alawis uh, in his time um, wanted to uh, get married to a slave girl in Yathrib, in Medina. But he wasn't able to pay the price of Maher or uh, getting her from the owner. He told Imam Jawad about it. Imam alayhi salam uh, asked about her keeper, the, 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 the place she stayed and all about her. Sometimes later, uh, the Alawi asked about the uh, the girl, and it was he was told that uh, the girl had been uh, taken away. He asked about who had taken her. They told her it's not uh, known who is the person that took her. Imam Jawad alayhi salam had freed her, had taken her from uh, slavery secretly. And uh, he bought a piece of land and a house, and he put the girl there. Now, this person hurried to Imam al-Jawad and uh, informed him about this story and uh, showed to him how you know uh, sad he was of missing uh, you know to marry or to get the the girl. Uh, Imam asked him. Do you know who has taken her? The man said, no, I don't know. Uh, Imam alayhi salam uh, took the man and went to him, with him to a small village where the, uh, the girl was. And uh, as, they come, as they came closer to the house, uh, Imam alayhi salam asked uh, this man to enter the house. He refused. Uh, Imam insisted that he should come in. 
and um, a man came in and uh, to his surprise he saw the girl in that house imam asked uh, this man alawi do you know her he said yes i know at this point imam alayhi salam told him that now she this girl with all the furniture the garden and its sealed are given to you the man could not believe it he was filled with delight and he was confused how he should thank al imam jawad alayhi uh, salam but uh, this is it that the, he has given all that he, more than what he had expected from him and these are just some of the uh, narrations that are uh, reported from imam he was generous not only to human beings but even to the animals and there are instances also which are recorded of that uh, from about the imam and how he used to treat people and do good uh, to them and uh, that's how he became known with the uh, title of al jawad inshallah ta'ala in the next session uh, when we meet discussing about the personality of uh, the uh, of imam muhammad al jawad we will highlight uh, some of other uh, aspects and some of other attributes uh, related to this holy personality walhamdulillah rabbil alamin mm -hmm.